Tony. Out of Grove Street Stories, back at it today. Oh, a two week break, and then we back at it. Fucking with the LAW. Uh -huh. Low. Good. Good. Citywide Soze, this wow. bitch, Beats by Citywide. Actually, this is a Highly Grove, Highly Grove, Girt Town Street Store around this motherfucker, uh -huh. you did. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Man, tell me how, what some of your early memories of both y'all neighborhoods, Girt Town and Highly Grove. My earliest memory was them breakfasts at Glow for a dollar. <laughs> oh, yeah? That was my earliest memory. And just, you know, the fam, the fam, being at my grandma's house, bro, everybody close, tight. You know, I kind of miss that, you know, how things go nowadays, but I miss that, bro. What That's corner that was? We was on Pine and Pritchard. Pine and Pritchard. We right around the corner from NASA, right there by Dominican. Oh, all right, all right. Uh -huh. What you beat? Man, mine is just like like coming up because like you know I, I'm originally born on the West Bank, but when I was a baby, we came here, and like you know I grew up for like all the way to like middle school, and just like you know the community and the camaraderie like because you know everybody know each other, wherever you go you good, everybody found. And everybody grew up together. It's like you know, the whole gang, like especially like coming up around here. It was me, Peanut, Trinice, Tasha, Bubba, and this shit was our oyster. We running up and down this motherfucker before they had the fucking gates up there. We was yeah. back and across this that motherfucker shit. playing with the train and shit. So mm -hmm. <laughs> on the train track, well, yeah, that yeah, Holly Grove is life pretty much. Uh, how long y'all been knowing each other? Since what, 91, 92? 30 years. Yeah, about 30, 30 years. 30 years? Yeah. 30 years. Bro. What y'all met on the, in the hood or y'all met in the music? Nah, we actually met at school, bro. We was at Warren East. Warren East? Warren, I, was, uh, I was in my sophomore year, okay? We were in freshman year. And we used to always be rapping. Yeah, to be honest, we was in, in Robert Cruz. Yeah. He was in World Threat. I was in Poet Society. Yeah. What, what, Rap Cruz? Yeah, yeah my yeah. crew wasn't even... What, my my rap was a clown crew. Yeah, just, we oh, just, we, right. we know, like, make crazy poetry songs and shit like that and all that shit. But, you know, by, by us being in the same school, we ended up going against each other. And you know me, I'm like the recruiter. So I'm like, when I came across him, I'm like, fuck, you know, that's the nigga that got the steal and, like, and brought him in my crew. Yeah. Because, like, I was already uh, recording with my cousin. And, you know, I just saw him and I came across him and Dajiano. What cousin are you talking about? Jay Mike. Oh, yeah, everybody know him. That, 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 that's the ghost. That's the original city why I saw it. That's where yeah. I get the name from. Yeah. Oh, but right. you know, we just all clicked up and mobbed up being like minded people and fucking with the music and, and having an entrepreneurial spirit. So we, we just started doing our own music and putting, you know, investing in ourselves. We was investing in ourselves in high school, oh, like right. early, bro. We was putting up flyers. We had our own tapes, disc makers. Going out of town, we was going shows. all out of town doing shows. A lot, bro. We were doing a lot. I remember when uh, I was going to Rod Wayne at the time, and we went out of town to do a show at Grammar. Like we had to, I I had to actually get permission, like from my mom to go because I was in school. You know what I'm saying? And it was, we was gone the whole week of school. You know what I'm saying? And we had school like yeah, we going out of town here. Yeah, we going to do this show. Like it was, it was just cool, son. Yeah, yeah like we've been. We've been doing this music shit a long time, bro. What man. made y'all? I noticed y'all say Warren Easton, then you say Rod Wayne. What made y'all pick like y'all pick so? Right. Nah, we we in New Orleans, baby. So we <laughs> so we went to some shit. Yeah. Like, yeah. We, like we, that's he called. Yeah, like, that's, we that's, went to Easton. Yeah. We got kicked out of Easton. Yeah. Then we went to Corn. Oh, all right. Some went to Full Shade. Like that's, we, yeah. we, that's we, we the type of schools. Everybody was in different schools because all we was getting kicked out of them bitches. Wow, wait, I'm like, damn, these Holly Grove niggas in my world. I went with the Joe Mack, too. Yeah. 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 We had a down one seven represented in Joe Mack when, when I was in the Mack. So it wasn't many of us, but they respected We was always Mac. represented in some school in 17. Uh, you know, a lot of us was living in other places, so they had to go to other schools, but they really naturally be from the 17th. Mm -hmm. And I'm slipping like a motherfucker right now. Y'all tell these people where we at right now, duh. Holly Grove, baby. Yeah, Holly Grove. Paramount, we under the bridge. If y'all wondering what that noise is, <laughs> that's the cause pass. Because it's cool, and it's hot out here. So yeah, that, that sun was hating on the niggas, yeah, so we had to come. Good right yeah, we posted up right across from um, Job Coast. Mm -hmm. 
But look, put it like this. What's, what was a big event back in the day where everybody had to be there? Bruh, we were just fucking talking about it. What? If you don't fucking know, because people don't talk about that shit. And he already, you see the look on his face. <laughs> watch, that? watch this. I don't really hear that. Watch this. The Riverboat Holla Motherfucking Louie. It's that an old it. folks home now, but that yeah, was the spot. That was, that was it. That's where all the concerts went down. Yeah. All the major labels in the city. Big Boy, Cash Money, Take Take Four. Four. Man, they all had every holiday. They had a big concert in the Riverboat. The whole city in the Riverboat. That sounds like it's downtown. It was on two left. Nah, right there on two left. Yeah, right there on oh, two left. Oh, it was on two left? Yeah, right mm -hmm. before you get the Jeff Davis, huh? Before you get the uh, Jeff Like a block off of Jeff Davis. Yeah. yeah that was the spot, though. That was the spot in the 90s, bro, as far as where the whole city come together. And back then, you know, we talking about the 90s, 94, 95, 96. And you had, that's when music was popping here as far as yeah. artists. Like you everybody was listening to everybody. Like we was in a store. We go in a store. They had local sections. First, as soon as you walk in, in there, yeah, bro, yeah like, that, that was the that was. And the like you know, it was the beginning of a lot of shit. Cause like our first time coming across no limit was outside the river. See, Bird, see Bird and Pete was outside. I, I don't even, I, I can't remember if it was a big boy show, a tape for show, or a cash money show. That was the one Christmas. of their concerts. No, that wasn't the Christmas. That wasn't it was the one Christmas of their concerts. Show. and Pete and that was outside. Giving and away you, body body tapes. Yep. Yeah. We like, like for the beginning. That's how we first came across No Limit. I, yep. I came across them off the movie. Then I heard the sound. I'm gonna tell you yeah. something. I'll tell you something. I, and I, I know you like, bro, you're giving away my secrets. <laughs> <laughs> On the movie, I'm about it. Yeah. It was so dope because at the end of the movie, remember the, I, they had the video at the end. Yeah. And they was doing a concert. Uh -huh. And they had the big I'm about it banner. Well, we was in the Riverboat yeah. Hallelujah that night. Yeah. Ain't nobody know them then. Right. They yeah. went on stage, dropped this big ass No Limit banner. Oh. No Limit Records, run the body body with me and X and put that shit on camera. I'm bothered. Like it, was, like it was a No Limit concert. Yeah, I was that, like, that, hey, that's that a was fun a fact about right? that. A lot of people <laughs> think that part in the video is a No Limit concert, but I think that was, that was actually a Big Boy concert. That was concert. a Big Boy concert. And he dropped the banner. They dropped, they dropped their banner. Band on it. It was made, on made it look like they shit. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it wasn't was no standing uh, banner. Yeah. And then he used it on the move. Oh, yeah. You know what I'm saying? So it was dope, though. It was a, it was a nice little power move. Yeah, that's his deal. When well, niggas used to hustle back then, we had to be creative, man. We were just talking about that the other day. We had to be creative out here. And be out here with that music. You know oh, what I'm saying? Yeah. You had to be on the scene. Yeah, if, you to be, if you wanted to be hot, if you wanted to be heard, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Out here. yeah that's kind of different now because niggas ain't passing out CDs no more and fit with this. Nigga don't, nigga don't. Yeah. 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 You just got you to promote that shit online and people go, got their picks and chooses who they going to rock with. You know what I'm saying? But, um, that all changed when you bring yourself to them. You, you got you got to jump in people's laps. That's the part a lot of people don't do. Yeah. If they be you know they got all they they they, they coins put into the internet, but you you got to do way more than that shit. Yeah. What what all got y'all into <coughs> rapping? How long y'all been rhyming? Shit, music in my blood. My daddy was a saxophonist. Yeah. He played for Herman Thomas. That was before I was born. Mm. So he played all three saxophones, and uh, that's just a part of that's just a part of who I am. You know what I'm saying? And, you know, we come up in a time when, when hip hop was making this, this power move mainstream. You remember how old y'all was? How old? I was shit, man. Maybe about 13, 14. 13, 14. When I first started doing karaoke, I had two radios. I put a tape in one, I put an instrument in another, press play, hit record, and we put the microphone tapes. in the earphone. I didn't even have no microphone, no. it was just a radio. They had the mic on the radio. Oh, so all you had to do we was doing that the radio. shit. <laughs> Mike was doing that shit. We were putting the headphones in the microphone thing. Yeah. The headphones in the mic. <laughs> yeah. But, like, far as with me, like, all my life, I'm pretty much born into that shit. I come from a musical family. You know, singers, rappers, dancers, DJs. I was always around it. My brother, um, my youngest brother, his daddy is a uh, DJ Jimmy's stepdaddy. Like he got DJ in his blood. So just just being around it, and like I said, around him, you know, it wasn't nothing but bar parties and DJs and running the margins and running whatever it was in that era. She was in that bitch margins, tips, whatever it was at the time. That's where everybody you know got together and did their thing. 
mm-hmm. and we was right across the street, so it, it, I was always around it. But like, I say like junior high, I start fucking with poetry. Then you know, a rap coming in, a gangster rap coming in, and you seeing people that look just like you making records. Right. Like fuck, I might well be a rapper. And mm-hmm. then you know, fuck the music so much in my head. I can, you know, one time, fuck, I'm in Walmart. I made a beat off a basket. So it's always been like hand in hand because yeah. it's, it's second nature. So were you rapping rap. first or doing beats? Yeah, I was rapping first. Rap 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 first. You I did beats too, huh? Like yeah, I do tracks too. I've been doing tracks since maybe what two thousand. I've yeah. been doing tracks heavy, man. I, I produced a lot of my own music. About twenty-five like, years for you on the beats. Yeah, it's been, a, it's, been a, it's been it's been a long time. I don't know how long. But I know once I got my own, it was on and rocking. Yeah, I, yeah. I got my own boy when I when I moved to Texas for Katrina. Yeah, yeah. and we ain't had no studio because mm-hmm. we was just like out there. Yeah. So shit, I took my film money. Learn I went got a board. Learn <laughs> I went got a board. I went got a computer, and we was on and cracking, bro. And you know we were making some noise. I made a few street tapes. Few one man, tapes. man, man, shit. That's how we. That's how we. That's, that's the main. The, the whole yeah. basis of the crew, like. We always the whole like crew is full of people that self sufficient. Everybody got a yeah, talent yeah. that they specialize in. Right. So it's like you don't have to put the whole cake on one man. Everybody, Everybody can do something. something it's like, you know, fuck. We, we, I remember one time we went there, like we was just talking about this not long ago. We went in the studio with nothing. Come out that bill about six. He came out songs. that bill about six <laughs> songs. <laughs> right. 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 Where y'all used to recall that? We used to recall my felt. Small World Studio. Small World Studio over there on two lane right there by Nick's Buck. Nick's Buck? That's when the red, white, and blues was. Yeah, high. that's like the uh, courthouse almost. Yeah, yeah. Oh, not the courthouse. Yeah. yeah, I don't remember Nick's. I don't think that I was remember before, Nick's. That was before they put the hospital up back there and everything. Mm-hmm. What that club was on the corner? Unlimited? Unlimited. Unlimited. Yeah, the corner yeah. Right yeah. It was rocking though, bro. The 90s, was, the 90s was where it was, bro. When it, when it comes to yeah, the Yeah, and then the time like that. that you know, like getting in the studios and shit and meet different type of producers. Like once we got exposed to drum machines and studios, yeah, he was pretty was much it. on it. That was it. Like, like, like our fucking old engineer, he was like, man, I don't want y'all niggas to learn too much because y'all gonna stop coming to this bitch. <laughs> <laughs> he already knew what it was. Everything to be yeah, that, that's what it was. Like, for real, bro, we was going in the later track. Uh-huh. Do the lyrics. Yeah. Like, and then we on to the next. Uh, and we were just spitting them out. And I was I was in the zone, bro. It was like once yeah, I just, Tupac right there. Once I just got to where my pen was just fluid mm-hmm. and it was just coming like water, that was it, bro. I was I was on I was like, yeah. Who was some of the rappers y'all were inspired by like coming up? Nah, it's about to get real. Nah, it's about to get real. <laughs> you know, Go ahead. <laughs> you know, fuck, I just drop it. Drop a top five, y'all. I get. I gotta give a shout out to J Dog, bro. You you can't always, put in top five. I, I always gotta give a shout out to J Dog. Shout out to my bro Herb too, bro. Cause my oh, yeah. my bro Herb, Herb was like a like a music scout back then. Herb? Yeah, Herb. All figure check. Oh, all right, all right. Yeah. So you know he he just had an eye. He was like, man. You got something, bro. Oh, man. but he, yeah, he don't rap. You yeah, just he don't he rap. Just, he, yeah, just, he got yeah, that yeah. eye. He, he, had had eye he always been like a manager. Yeah, and, uh, he always had an eye for talent, but he, he don't want me to put me on. But, yeah. You know, like when I, look, when I look at j Dog, I was always inspired by his work ethic. Yeah. Like, you know, they were dropping they were dropping a lot of music. And, of course, my bro, of course, my bro, Jay Mike. Like, my bro, Jay Mike, was just a... For me, he was like the epitome of young success. Yeah. Like somebody who, who you wouldn't expect at his age to have a maturity and business mind he had. Mm. So he was like, I always looked up to him because he was smart, he was organized and shit in order. You know what I'm saying? And, and he did shit in a professional manner, always did. And he just, you know, he inspired me to be that way. Like whatever I do. You know, I, I do it my best to the best. He's still around? Man. Yeah, you know, he, he in Houston right now. Oh, you know, that's fam. That's fam, too. Yeah, that's, yeah. A man, that's a man that brought it all together. Yeah, yeah I didn't know if he passed on or you like, just, uh, you know. Nah, he's, he's still around. Right. Yeah, he's it's hard for him to pass on. That nigga <laughs> <laughs> You see that nigga when you see that nigga. That, that's also my mentor yeah. and the person that brought me into, you know, making tracks and shit and doing all um, and rapping. Yeah. It's like he introduced the whole idea to me. And that's when we was coming up in the NWA time, seeing NWA do the shit. 
And we like, man, them niggas look like us. All we need is a money man, yeah. the talent, right. and somebody that could work with. So we like pretty much took their blueprint and followed their blueprint. Like I said, we came across love. Right. But like for us coming up, like besides him, because he, he's also like a number one to me. He ain't got to be the man that sold the most records. But as far as influence, especially like towards us, he'll be a number one. And then not only j Dog, but the menace as a whole. That was, that was a hell. I, 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 all we used to fucking rock was fuck. We was black men as fucking heads. Yeah, that's <laughs> that's that's from, so that's from, all from we fucking do. Uh, from Go Off. Mm -hmm. yeah. When it was in the left and the right, I was bumping it. Uh -huh. and you fun. said something about Ice, Ice <coughs> Man or something, huh? Uh, what, what is that? Yeah, that's that's, my man, that's one of my mentors, another producer mentor. Yeah. Oh, I'm a producer, Yeah, yeah. Uh, he produced uh, Buzz Down, Put Your Ballads On, and oh, Nasty right. Bitch, you know. He, he actually hosted my mixtape, yeah, too. The that Miley Cyrus is a rap mixtape I put out, uh, and that was about, what, 2010? Yeah. Oh, that was oh, so right. long. Damn, 2010. It had been that long. Wait, what the name of mine was? Yeah, Miley Cyrus is a rap. It was a mixtape oh. I dropped when I was yeah. in Houston. This was, this was poster training. Yeah, mm -hmm. hosted by Ice Mike. Yeah, he hosted the, uh, the whole mixtape. Yeah, he's, he's somebody that helped me tremendously, like, getting in the game, like, when I got on the MySpace shit. And, like, you know, he used to come through the page and we pull shit from the page. He still fucking do that shit, but, like, you know, shit, we, 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 we got closer. He sent me a couple of tracks. He uh, produced on one of my mixtapes, um, Out of Exile. Uh -huh. You know, he plugged me in with Devious and Arlene and all them. So he, you know, he he he's he's a flagship producer in what in what we do at least. Yeah, yeah. So shit, what's some of y'all earlier projects y'all recorded? I heard you just say something about Barry Sanders a rap. Nah, before that man, we first started <laughs> way back shit. all the way to ninety three. Ninety three, yeah. coming up ahead. Shouts out to my bro Daciano, Soze fam. You already know, but we dropped the Criminal Behavior EP. Uh, that was in what ninety two? Nah, we're ninety six. Oh shit. Yeah, that was, that was that was my age. That was my age. Yeah, ninety three was Mafia Calls Mafia Calls Pain. Yeah, both was in this, or this is just love. So OCC was all of us. Yeah, so like we came out with Mafia Calls and Pain first. Yeah. Then when we found, you know, that, that, that just like it's, I'm telling you, as the story goes on, I come across Law. I hook him up with another one of my partners. They make a group. We came out with their tape. Then we came back out with another Mafia Calls and Pain. Then, you know, we kind of like took a hiatus and then like right before uh, the storm, we came out with the, uh, the Soze family, which uh -huh. was the whole collective of everybody that's, that's been rolling with us since the beginning. Yeah, we had a nice family. We, uh, I like the way everybody moves, man. Shouts out to the Soze. Yeah, all the time. All right. Tell me about Hounds from Girl Town. Oh, man. When they dropped with No Limit, bro, when they dropped the album with No Limit, they had the hood on fire, bro. Yeah, because it was like it was a big moment mm -hmm. for well, it was just time. one yeah. of them, right? Yeah, full blooded. Yeah, full but blooded. the full blooded album, if you really dissect it, is really Hounds from Girl Town. Like, if you know Hounds from Girl Town, was on? yeah, they, they, they still, still was represented. Still it just wasn't on. out called that. Because I saw the album cover. Yeah, because like, that was the group at first before they got signed to No Limit as yeah. Hounds from Girl Town, but yeah. No Limit chose. The they never blood. dropped that yeah. album. Yeah, mm -hmm. nah, they just did the full blood. Yeah, but it still was. It was groundbreaking for the hood because just to see, yeah. just to see somebody come from back there to really right. take it to a nationwide level and represent the hood. I remember me and my cousins wrote every day in the Cutlass and yeah. nothing else playing. That's it. Ain't hey, nothing else playing. Yeah. 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 And it was just, it was just good to see, bro. But you know, my thing about the hood, bro, that really just like get to my heart the most is to watch Xavier buy To watch what? Xavier. Buy oh, buy yeah. that neighborhood, you know oh, what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, that yeah. yeah, that kind of, you know, it made me think about what we should be doing as a people, investing in our neighborhoods and keeping yeah. that stuff us instead of letting people come in and buy us out right. and leave us with, with, with you know, I like now, after my, after my NT pass, my NT pass last year, I don't have no family back there no more. Like yeah. all my family is now officially not in her town. And we talking about we started back there in the forties, forty four. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Right there on Pine and Pritchard, right yeah, in Cottage Because I Court. think the blacks was yeah. in their town yeah. first before they yeah. came to Hollywood, yeah. yeah. right? Yeah. 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 And everything yeah. migrated this way, but just to see the university buy up all the area. And, you know, it, it, it's just it's like rough. I should have hospital. I should have bought everything. Same thing, same thing right? Yeah. And, and it's happening now with the homes. 
right up to 2030. And then the thing about it, not even to really get off the subject, but the houses that's being built, they're purchased now, they're not even owned by people, they're owned by corporations and businesses. House. Not even corporations, names. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's like really they buying us out, moving us out slowly but surely. Yeah, you know, that's we start. Didn't you know, I mean, could be a good thing, could be a fucked up thing too. You did, right? I mean, I'm not against. To be honest, it's, it, it's an old thing. It's been going on. I've been saying that shit like when I was standing on Edinburgh Eagle, we had a little, uh, little, little white man, white crazy man. white man. But you could tell he had fucking paper. He had a little spot right there across the street from my mama's house. Yeah, but that's that's that they, they, they always be in here. They we ain't we ain't always known from Kim. them and they ain't always known from us. Kenna took it to another level. My dad is from Kenna. So I saw the KC, all the family out of KC. But my dad is from Kenna. Yeah. And when they got treasure chest casino, mm-hmm. the whole city changed. That ain't nothing. That used to be nothing but woods. You had old Kenna like countryside mm-hmm. where oh, yeah, I used to live <laughs> and then the other side where the Esplanade Mall and all that at night yeah. all of that was tree yeah you know yeah. so I remember when Kenna had three police cars like Barney Fife nigga the green, <laughs> the green they had the green and yellow yeah there was three of them that was it yeah. you know, now they got SWAT helicopters all yeah. of this shit from the treasure chest, they put the treasure chest casino, all that money flowed into that little small ass city. Yeah. And now that feels like a little awesome. mini Beverly Hills in Louisiana. Like some mob shit. Yeah. Did the casinos yeah. get that? I was just telling. You know what uh, I'm I was just telling Tay uh, the other day. Yeah, man, they, you know, know, they got their own mayor and shit. Like, mm-hmm. ain't no, ain't, uh, American Trail ain't no mayor or killer. They got their own shit going on out there. You heard me? So, yeah, that's what's up. All right, let's see what I said about. I see, as you talk about the house in Birdtown, tell me about the Four Horsemen. The original Four Horsemen. <laughs> I was about to say which the one. Original four, oh, they had more than one? That's the story behind four. it. It's a story behind the Four Horsemen, bro. Oh, so, well. The original Four Horsemen was me, my big bro, J. Mike, and Daciano. Daciano? Yeah, shots out to my the brother. Nature Boy, the yeah. Crippler, the Enforcer. That was the photo the minutes days. Yeah. And we was working on that before we decided to go do our, you know, we, we was looking for different options. Yeah. Right? So when I got with Menace, he liked the idea. And the, the album was called Four Horses. <laughs> and and you was the young one of the And I was the youngest one of the group. So yeah, but I didn't know the name of the album. Oh no. Till this was <laughs> Oh, yes it did. Yeah, it, 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 all, it all panned out. I mean, the story still was told because at the end of the day, my nigga smashed on that bitch. That, I that, bet he to, did. To me, that's <laughs> the, uh, the goal of the album, just to see my nigga on the album amongst them. Because like I said, we looked up to them. Yeah, the J Dog, Insane, right. and Quick. Yeah. And for, to see my dog in that circle and still be eating because like he was Hunger as fuck oh. then. So like every fucking track he was on, he was killing that bitch. I remember seeing y'all on with the fat pad and all that. Yeah, yeah. 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 you had to break it down to him with yeah. the letters. Yeah, lyrical assault weapon. Lyrical yeah, yeah. I, don't, I don't remember that yeah. much, but I don't yeah. remember hearing the album though. Yeah. But I know y'all did a song. Man. I was actually working on the solo album. I don't even remember the name, what yeah. the name of the album was, but I was. I was pushing them out. I had pushed out about 10, 12. Oh, yeah. I was ready to roll, but I didn't yeah. go that way. But it was a dope album. Uh, it was a dope album, but it was really, for me, the, the style that I was flowing on that album, it branched off into my full self. Uh-huh. Like, because, you know, coming up, we had who we liked and we would mimic. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? We had all the shit we was doing, but you could still hear what we was listening to mm-hmm. so after i got with that and got to get more experience in the music itself i took off into my style after that you developed was, young. yeah i developed my then it was just i you know he sound like him that's right. all right. Right. Like, that's what it was all right, all right. Be, keep calling the beat it's citywide they <laughs> call me anything. The fuck that that that's that's how I roll. Majesty City Y so they be. That's who I am. That's that's my element. So I, I, I'm gonna still answer. I ain't gonna I ain't gonna fuck with you. Long as you don't say majestic 
and some what, shit that, that it ain't even is. Majestic, what was that? Yeah, man, people used to like try to put <coughs> on my top with my name because you no, know, I came out as Majesty Jose. What was the wrestler name? Because I know you wanted to be a wrestler. And what? <laughs> you be paying attention. <laughs> but what was your wrestler name? Hey, I, I, I want to be a wrestler. Um, uh, Rugged Renegade. It wasn't put together yet. Oh no. But yeah, like because you know, fuck when I came up on that shit, it was character based. Yeah, so, you know, yeah. I, I came up with a character. Storyline was the shit, though. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then, you know, at the time when I was fucking young, like, a lot of people don't realize that shit deep-rooted in the South. We used to see Russell, like, dog, you could be Call chilling right here, man, and junk y'all dog would go knock at that fucking house as a fucking kid. Like, like oh, yeah. the back then, they they, 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 they used to be back here. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, that was, you know. Junk y'all dog used to be back here. When he when they come to town, yeah, he yeah. be in fucking Holly Grove in the night walk. Shout out to that, dude. So, that long was fucking weed and stone cold and shit before the magic. So, so Rick Flair on Broad Street. Oh, I heard Rick Flair was on some racist shit, bro. Yeah, now, he, he, he with that's still real shit. fucking flat, though. You know, that, 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 that's, that's the fact. He called two different people niggas on, you know. Yeah, that, that, that's, 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 that's the time he came up in. Oh, fuck that's that's who they is, though. Yeah, that's, that's, what they is. that's their nature. That's what they do. You know what I'm yeah. saying? That's why I'm to the point, as far as that shit go, you got to expect that from them. Yeah, that's, mm -hmm. that's, that's definitely a white man's foot, you know? <laughs> Uh, tell me about your history with Big Rap and Insane. Insane is my cousin. That's my big cousin. Like it's 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 J Mike who we talked about earlier, Insane, and then me. We like the generation of cousins coming up that fuck with the music rap wise. Mm -hmm. So um, it's Big Rap. Rap, that's my, like what I was talking about the little crew he was in because the crew he was in was in the crew of Rap, yeah, which I later up. joined. And disband because I took them out because I had plans for them. Because <laughs> I was on some Barry Gordy shit. I, 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 I had an ear for talent. I know who was who. You I, put that shit together though. Yeah, bro. like that. That's what made our group strong. Like, yeah. he, he had it down, bro, because we've been rocking ever since. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then, you know, like a lot of people, you know, people fuck with me on the rap shit, but for as long as I've been doing the rap shit, I've been kind of like on the back end in the background. That's why I do my most work. But yeah. You know, I come out and drop something like I got um three mixtapes I put out. You know, the criminal behavior album he talking about, I produced that. So so I'm he still always been the glue. Yeah, mm -hmm. I just like oh, yeah. to keep it. Let's keep this shit going. Mm -hmm. They keep going. Oh, you gotta, yeah. you gotta have that though. You yeah. gotta have somebody who keep that structure. Been, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, and I'm selfish. It's like I was telling about him the other day. Like when we was coming up in that in that earlier shit I was telling you about. Like it was always meant to be mafia cause of pain than me, but like I said, by the time he I got to me, I, I came across yeah, criminal behavior. <laughs> so I'm like, fuck me, they we gonna did. put them out. Yeah. And then my my partner come to me like, yeah, you ready to start working on that solo album? I'm like, man, what the fuck you talking about? We about to put law out. <laughs> <laughs> like I've I always been the type of I play my position. I know when I come out, and when I come out, That's I'm gonna come out. That's what always man will be. Always about what's best for the whole. Right, mm -hmm. right. What I want to do. If this, if this, if this track rocking, you killing that bitch. Your voice. Mm -hmm. I like it. And you can make voice, six of them bitches in a yeah, day. Go ahead. <laughs> Let's do that. Go ahead. Yeah, say no to Tim. Nelly wasn't the original person to blow, but he had. Yeah. It. He had that spark. He had that. Yeah, and his crew, that's crew yeah. behind him. That's the type of crew we was. Yeah, because it was the big dude who was supposed to be the breakout artist. Uh huh. Ali was supposed to be the breakout artist, but he but like. But at the same time, that go into yeah. the uh, the Soze shit, because like you know, that's from Usual Suspects, mm -hmm. Kaiser Soze. Right, if you right. You look into that shit. Yeah. With, the, with them. Stole one of my questions. <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna break with it. them. Well, good. I'm going to break it down to you now. With them right now, like what you see in the movie, like when the dudes start walking straight in the end, yeah. and everybody like, oh, it's the dude. Yeah. Not necessarily because it's five pieces to that puzzle. You got to talk to the other four men that ain't there to represent themselves so you don't even know if he really the leader. Yeah. That's how we was. We was a clique of fucking leaders, and nobody knew who the big dog was, who the real head was, because yeah. everybody did so much. Right. Yeah. A lot of people don't move like that no more. Right? Mm -hmm. That's what's up. Right. Small thing. But look, tell me about Out of My Mind and Lion Out of My Mind came from my drug times. 
I just gotta be real. I was, I was high. Now these two albums are missing. Uh, out of my mind was a song. Oh, out of my mind was Lion a song. Was yeah, Lionhearted was the album. Oh, all right. But Lionhearted right. never came out. The reason I didn't put Lionhearted out because I wasn't happy with the mix and master. Oh. So it took away from the content, and it was real powerful content. Like the songs wasn't just song. The song it was like. Lion. I thought you put it online or something and you sent me a link or something where they had like I had the I had a couple I had, of songs out. I had the whole I had the whole I had the whole cover made and everything. Songs listed on the front, back, everything. Yeah. But I chose not to release it because I wasn't happy with the mixing and matching. Yeah, the quality. Yeah, the it wasn't good. And I was like, this music is too revolutionary to mm. be right. sounding raggedy. So, you know what I'm saying? I, I chose to just kind of step back off it, and then life and business mm -hmm. just kind of took a front seat to it. But it's still a dope album. If anybody want to check it out, just hit me up. I shoot you the MP3 and let you check some of it out. But yeah, it was. It was yeah, for the most part, it was still good. Like I said, it was yeah. still good to me. Yeah. What's the song of a project you dropped that whole special meaning to you? Why? Really, with uh, Daddy Love You, my first ball, my son. I did that song for my son. And I did a song for my bro Phil, rest in peace to my bro Phil. And I did this song for him before he actually died. I did the song for him when he got shot back in the 90s. He got shot, and I did the song for what had happened. Mm. And it was, it was like a real powerful song. And you know what I'm saying? It was just dope. And that was like really. Anything that I really like, because I did everything from my heart, but it wasn't, I wasn't just rapping. I'm like spitting what's inside of me. That's how I was. So, you know, I had a lot of stuff that touched people, like was able to really touch people's soul when they listened to it. And what's the name of that one? Which one? You said the second one, the one about your book. Uh, what the name of the song was I had with them? Dogs Don't Leave Me. Dogs Don't Leave Me. That was the name of that song. It's still all this still online where people can hear them though. A lot of it is. I got a lot of music I did that I don't get. I like I said, bro. I was like at that time, really like what Lil Wayne was doing in the two thousands. Yeah. How he was just putting out mixtape out. That's how I was just dropping. Yeah. I was just dropping, but it wasn't really always for like I wasn't always pursuing a career with my music. Right. We was doing this shit that we love doing this shit like. This, this, some music like that was what we wanted to do. You know what I'm saying? But it was more like once I got on the business side of it, it's when I got with well, really with the criminal behavior with my bro J Mike. Yeah. And I he showed me the business side of how to handle things. At his age, it was a real upgrade for me. I was an immature while and they were on rap and That's run the streets and try to yeah. some hold, get some drink, you heard that what I wanted to do. But right. he showed me that that maturity level of how to handle the business side of it. Mm -hmm. So that's what I came to. Yeah, so, you know, fast forward a little bit to the prison. <laughs> Around the time I really started, you know, getting acquainted with you. Tell me how the journey been with 24 7 film and photography. Man, that's been a blessing of my life. Yeah. And how that came about, really. <laughs> what got y'all into, like, film and the videos? I'm going to tell, the... tell you how I had to get to you. I was working. I had just come from Houston. I had just got all papers. Yeah. I had a, my one year old daughter. Mm. You heard me. I had my son. I was broke. Mm. You heard me. Right. I came from Houston. I was sleeping on my broke couch. Big shout out to my big bro, Willie, because he held me down when I ain't had nothing. Yeah. I was sleeping on my broke couch. The people who were staying in the house next to him was actually moving out, but we used to see the landlord all the time. Right. So when they moved out, I was like, bro, I need a spot to let me, you know, and I'm going to show you how I was gone, bro, it was fake because the man ain't even asked me for no ID, bro. The man yeah. said, just give me your word that you could pay the rent on, on time every month yeah, and you can move in. So long story short, I gave my word. I had a job at uh, Wines Flying Burrito on Barone. Uh -huh. Shit was too stressful for me. I walked off the job. Yeah. I just 
Dana's man, my word. <laughs> yeah, that's I'm gonna pay this rent. Uh, you heard me, and I didn't walked off the job. Yeah. So I just stepped out on faith, bro. I picked up the camera. And really, shouts out to you, bro, because <laughs> you called me to do the anniversary party with you and your wife. Oh, oh, my fifth year anniversary? Yeah. And my that, was, that was like what got me working. Right. You heard me? Like, yeah. really, like, okay, like, it's time to do you this now. Yeah, yeah. And I started making flyers, going out in front of Walmart. They were running my ass, talking about I'm soliciting all that yeah. shit. Yeah. And shit, <laughs> six years later, bro, I just shot over 150 weddings in over 200 events. In how many years, you said? Six, six years. You know what I'm saying? Run. Like, it's a blessing, though, dog. Like, I'm really, like, I had no filming experience. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was just, it's got to be something because I quit. <laughs> yeah. Hold up, man. it got to be something because I quit my job, yeah. right? And it was either I'm going to either take, I'm going to shoot videos uh -huh. or I'm going to do screen print. Yeah. And I ain't had no room in the house for no screen print machine. So right. I went with the camera. Yeah. I took it as a blessing. I was grateful to be able to do it. So now I just do it. Yeah, but you did it before you did the bad thing. You did the, um, the pictures for us. Yeah. What they call that? When the baby on the way pictures? Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. That's what I was talking about. No, you, the thing Back about up. Pat, no, Back that up. was a video. You did by Pat. You did our wedding. I took pictures too. That was in the park, though. That was on. Um, Shakespeare, what the hell? Shakespeare down? I done some stuff. Yeah, you done Shakespeare, you done City Park. Yeah, yeah. You done somewhere, you done um, Know the Spaces. Did that know the Spaces? You did us over there? I did, I did. But I can't think of the name of the film. We filmed around right here. Yeah. Shit, really though, that's what I say. Like, shout out to you though. Nah, nah, nah. Like, shit, you really played a part in my... Uh, my early journey doing that. Right, right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, I, like I, I see a nigga trying to do something with his Straight soul. up. Straight you know up. it ain't no bullshit or some politics. I'm going to fuck with you, you dead? Straight up. What up, baby? Highly grow street tapes, baby. Highly grow street stories. Street stories, yeah. Yeah, on YouTube. Catch us on wrong. YouTube. <laughs> I'm telling them wrong. Oh, y'all, you know what I'm saying? You said highly grow street tapes. Highly grow street tapes. I'm not, thinking about street tape. That's what yeah, I have in my shit, head. You shot street tape. You shot my fifth year wedding anniversary. Shot nine of my rap videos. Three of my family photo shoots. And you did my brother with me. You know what I'm saying? Shot out of two. You shot my first video who was produced by none under than this man right here. That's what's up. Like I said. Like <laughs> 2020 when we like, like said, you played a part. You played a part with, you know, with both of us. Yeah. Because like far as with that. Like I was just trying to get people to get take my beat seriously. Right. Everybody was so used to me rapping, right. and I never forget that fucking day. It was a pretty day. I said I'm gonna go and make me something that sound like a pretty day. Yeah, yeah. Went ahead, made that bitch, <laughs> put yeah. that bitch on Instagram. Right. Thirty minutes later, you was in my DM like, "What's up with that track?" <laughs> Yeah, I'm like, bro. fuck it, you ain't got nobody else to fuck with it. If you want it, you can fuck with it. Yeah. And one thing I appreciate the most, and I, I like, you know, when I bring you up and if I talk about you, like, the main thing I liked about it, it was like how you did the business. Did business. A lot of people out here trying to do this shit don't know how to do the business. Like, they won't talk. Yeah. But like, you know, fuck, when you came in, you backed up what you was talking you, to get what you wanted to. You go in your pockets and make the payment. Oh, you yeah. got nowadays, nigga be ducking you, yeah, trying, yeah. trying to let you slide with the deposit and, yeah, and yeah. still got half to give you. You know, you've never been that type right. of artist. Yeah, you always have and I, I say that's like, that. that's being like a stand-up artist because artists can learn from that right, shit. Like, if, you want, if you want something in this game, you, you got to pay for that shit. Right, right. right. Like, I did the song with Big Mike from the Ghetto Boys. He told yeah. me what he wanted. I'm like, damn, that's what, what it is? He said, well, how much you trying to pay to? You know, I'd be back to I'm like, bro, that's what you want? That's what I'm going to give you. And I gave it to him. Mm -hmm. I tried to get a feature from Fiend. He like, I'm going to show you love. I'm like, well, how much you charge? He like, such and such. I'm like, oh, nah, I never did it. Because mm -hmm. I could have been like, well, show me love. No, that's how much you charge. That's how much I'm going to give Right, right. You know what I'm saying? It, it might take me a minute, yeah. but I'm going to give you what you want. You respect, I'm not, you respect a man craft yeah. in his business for what yeah, he for what that's you, what that's what you want. People, that's what a lot of people, that's how a lot of people really miss out on blessings and connections. Mm -hmm. right. Because they too busy trying to get the get over. Get over. Yeah, yeah, you know what I'm saying? And then yeah. at the end, you're trying to get over, you really get over on yourself. And 
you asked out at the end of the day. That's just like shots out to J Dog too out in Houston, the, the Houston J Dog, right? Uh -huh. When I I was uh, getting ready to do something with him, you heard me, and uh, I hit him up. I was like, man, you know, let me know what you charge, bro. And he was, he told me what he charged. I was like, bet. Right. I got a little grinding to do. I'm up all night though. I'ma hit you up. He like, oh, you grinding for it? I'm like, yeah, I'm grinding, yo. He come down. Yeah. He come down with the price. Look, oh, you getting it like that? Right. All right, you, well, you, look, y'all, the price is. I'm like, you see what I'm saying? Because you're keeping it 100. Your well, first impression is your best yeah, impression, you think? Yeah, you want to make an impression on people, you want to build a relationship on people. A good one. You don't want a nigga call. But you don't want to call a nigga, they be like, this nigga come. Here you go. Always going to want something else. Right. Right, no, you don't. You want a nigga to answer that bitch be like, what up, nigga, what's yeah. up? You know I got you, right, you know what I'm right, You don't want right. a nigga pressing it no when you call because they know you with the bullshit, you know? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? All right, so who we, who we cover? All right, tune in, tune in, we'll slow me down remix. We did that bitch, Law hopped on that bitch and smashed it. Yeah. Yeah, so West Bank helped smashing that bitch. It was a hot fucking day, and um, what was that? In front of the dagger shot. Yeah. We started it for the dagger yeah, shot, then we ended up uh, with that with Alderman, huh? Yeah, yeah Alderman, Alderman Park, the riverfront. The, yeah. the river, the river bit. But yeah, that that's special because like at the same time, you know, we dropped 2020 won't slow me down, the original. Yeah. And both of us had some um, you know, some little health scares. Came yeah. a lot of that shit and came back and dropped the remix. So that yeah. that, 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 that holds a special place in my own. In the year 2020, when shit mm -hmm. was really We really were talking about what the fuck yeah, was going, going on. Right, right. I, I think that's what people respect about the bop of it. Yeah, yeah. Like, nigga was on some real shit. And yeah, then, like, yeah. you know, when that went to popping, I ended up uh, throwing a track for uh, G.I. Peaches. Uh -huh. So the Snump Sister. Oh, yeah. Uh, her album. I think there was a Project Bob album. I did a song called uh, Fuck It Up, Sis. I did the beat on them. Oh yeah. So like like yeah. that 2020 that that spiral that's when I really start gigging yeah. and getting my tracks out. Yeah, well, these people hearing about a nigga let me know because I don't be knowing who the fuck know a nigga and who don't know a nigga. You did? Yeah, I mean fuck. That's the thing about nowadays they, they ain't gonna tell you. They ain't gonna tell. They just go. The, the numbers niggas. gonna show you who they is. Yeah, they know who you is, but they might not acknowledge it. But I'd have had niggas walk mm. up to me and dab me off before I thought they might have mistook me for joke. Mm -hmm. Or they might have just, I don't know, but you know, they'd be like, maybe he saw one of your videos. I'd be like, oh, fuck, I forgot. I forgot all about that shit. Yeah, but um, tell me about the producer tag podcast. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's yeah. a new podcast song. We just recently dropped uh, the next episode. Mm -hmm. The podcast I got on YouTube, producer tag podcast. And that's just basically doing what we doing, you know. Real heads that, that got the knowledge and that been through shit and seen shit, talking about it. Cause like nowadays you got people that get on the internet and they fucking twist and turn the information and make it their own fucking thing. But fuck, I know one thing. Like even like go back to with the big boy, cash money, no living history shit. Like me and these this dude here is the people to talk to. Cause we was head first and all that shit. Yeah. Nigga, we heard them names. We was there. Right. We was the first ones that we saw we it all. We never been in the middle. We were always on the stage. Mm -hmm. Right there on the corner. We right here. We here early. We ready. Let's do this shit. <laughs> so is it just history in the sit about the city or is it about producing? Mm -hmm. It's about all that shit. Like, you know, you know, producing ain't just making the beat. Oh, yeah. Producing is like, you know, for the, 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 the seeds in this soil produce yeah, flowers. Yeah. Right. Like it's, yeah. it's things when you when you when you produce, it's really like elements and layers. Um, and, and like I said, we just have a real conversation about music. And music is production. Yeah, it ain't it ain't no music. It ain't no music without the production. Mm -hmm. well, well, who y'all got in the future? Guess you think about bringing on that? Um, we got Charlie V coming up on the next one. Like I said. We just dropped one with a with a big, big ramp. And before him was Charlie B. Before him was before him. It was just me and Jim. We just ran it together the oh, whole Jim? group. Oh, she was a co-host. Yeah, she that the Jim was a co-host. That's oh, part right. of that. Oh, all right. all right. All right. So tell me about Savage NFT. Yo, it's a whole <laughs> nother lane. Yeah. I always been into art, bro. That's just something I've been into since a child. I see the shirt. Yeah, shots out my artwork on the shirt. On the hat, the Savage NFT. Mm -hmm. But uh, I got into it because of the art 
really, that was another lane for art. You know, we couldn't go to art music. Right, so right. We didn't have no access to that shit. So this is like some black shit. No, it's worldwide shit. No, I mean, but you bring what you bring to it. I'm bringing Early? a new flavor to it. Oh, all right. Like I'm bringing my artistic flow. Like everything. Like when they see my artwork, it's the Florida Lee. They see the Florida Lee on. When they see that, they know it's new. They related straight to Savage and FT worldwide. Oh, right. You know, mm-hmm. and they know I'm from New Orleans. They yeah. know I represent New Orleans, but. It's, you know, and for those who may not know about NFT, it's just digital art assets. It's digital art assets? Yeah, it's connected to cryptocurrency. Oh, wow. You know what I'm saying? Like, I sell my artwork for cryptocurrency. I buy and sell art. I always did collect art. Like, I'm into that. Yeah, you know so it's paper involved in it. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I done done, I, I done, done a, couple of, a, a couple of grand volume in selling art. Oh, you know okay. what I'm saying? Like, in, it's growing in value, like people all over the world own my art. I just had art uh, exhibited in Bali. Oh, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like I had my art out in New York at NFT NYC dealing with NFT. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And yeah. I just didn't build the brand. It's just yeah. another brand I didn't build within, you know, with the other things that I do. You get any feedback like on it? Oh, worldwide, bro. I got. I got collectors all over the world, and I ain't even, I ain't even, like, this on some real shit. Like, I got collectors yeah. in every part of the globe, from Germany to Pakistan to India, That's everywhere, cool. bro. Like, people, I didn't, I didn't even collaborate with artists all over the world on art pieces. Like, because the NFTs and the, the technology mm. and brought in a whole nother realm of art where people collaborating on art. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And, it also got music in it. Like they got music in them teeth. They got people dropping music all over the world, you know, and they sell them as NFTs and you know, that's all profit, bro. Like ain't no middleman. They you it's it's what they call it, uh what's the what's the name of it? Uh, self custody. Like you self custody your your assets. Yeah. Right? Ain't no middleman in between it. But right. it's dope, man. A lot of people don't know about it. A lot of people hear about NFTs and Crypto and you know they think scam this and that. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. But true. it is a lot of that shit involved. Right. You know, right. people right. are able to do a lot of wicked shit. So, yeah, but the at the same time, it's got its use. Uh-huh. And it, it's got its lane, especially for artists and musicians and poets. Yeah. Like it's a you can actually have your music distributed worldwide and mm-hmm. make a hundred percent of your money from doing it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying. So definitely. Uh, that's what that's what's up. Savage NFT is where it's at, baby. <laughs> yeah. I even got the Nola collection. I got a, a art collection called the Nola collection, and I even made trading cards, like physical trading cards for oh, that yeah. collection. Yeah. You know, so it's some you gonna set up a shop or like a pop up shop somewhere with some shit or what? I, 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 I just... think about it with the merch. Yeah, that's what. But I'm I, want. I want to take it. I want it to be exclusive merch. So right now it's just yeah. First. yeah so for me right now it's just. I wear my art. Mm-hmm. I like to wear my art, so that's what it is. That's for that, for that. So uh, tell me what's next for the for the dynamic duo, Lord City Wilder. You know what I'm saying? We just steady, keep going from what we're doing and building that, building them layers until we able to sit back and reap the fruits of our labor. Really. So you still fucking? With, are you still fucking with music at all? I'm revamping my approach to music because I'm, I matured from what I was doing. Yeah, yeah. Like, like you know, I, I feel like not word, like I've come to understand words are powerful. Right. And right now for me, when I look at music, it's just a death murder culture on that shit. Mm-hmm. So for me, it's like, if I'm gonna do music, I'm gonna yeah, bring a light to it. Gotta be something switching it gotta, I'm switching the narrative. I'm too old to be rapping mm-hmm. about yeah, that same shit I was when yeah, I was a teenager. That's me too. You know that's, what I'm saying? Yeah. So, I'm, I, well, you know, I, I haven't, I, I can't never say I quit, but right. I did denounce all the foolishness that came out of my mouth yeah. from what I did when I was young. You know right, what I'm right. saying? Yeah, yeah. So when I come with music now, right. it's going to be on some whole other. You know what I'm saying? But I'm, right now, I'm just businessman, family man, running the. You know, trying to run the, the things that I'm building, the brands that I'm building. So, are we, are we gonna get a collaboration album between the two of y'all, or what? I'm about to oh, get shit, that man. to be to be <laughs> honest. The 
tell you a, a crazy story about that. Like I told you, I got a mixtape out of Exile. That's my second mixtape. Yeah. Out of Exile was actually supposed to be our collaboration album, but oh, yeah. Katrina split us up. And when I came back, I had to drop something, so I just dropped the Out of Exile. Oh, right. But, you know, it's always been in the works as far as, like, on a collaborative era. So we both like, together. Yeah, <laughs> and, you know, I, I got my, my little hit issues. I might not rap how I used to with so much energy and vigor and shit like that. Yeah, yeah. But I'm going to come back. But, like, my next project is going to be, like, an instrumental album slash, like, a chronic. Oh, like, right. I'm going to have features spitting on my beats. I might come down, might get down on one, one yeah, or two tracks, yeah. but you know, pretty much just you know trying Dropping to elevate it. Yeah. It and just it just come with that. something different. Because to be honest, like from you know from the span of my career for how long I've been doing this since like like late '91 to now, like I'm good with how that went. So like to be the nigga, the nigga with the mic. Yeah, I did all that already, so yeah, I, I ain't yeah. worried about it. Yeah, big dog time. Now. Yeah. But I, I got to say, and it's just me personally, but I, I'm really just disappointed with how the genre itself has deteriorated as far as really spitting that shit. Like, yeah. really but I ain't talking gonna about, like, it ain't taking away from everybody. Cause yeah, it's it's, 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 it's kind of on the consumer. But if you yeah, think about it, that's true. But when I look at we allowed it, when to I happen. look at life and, and things growing and elevate, I feel like where we the level we was in the nineties, we should be crushing yeah. with music. Like hip hop should be the shit that you don't want to turn off. You mean for the content, or you just what? I mean, yeah, as far as really the, the whole content, the whole the whole shit, the yeah. whole what it represents now for those who listen, for the consumer. Right for what they taking in when they listening to the music. Yeah, like you know let, me, what I'm let me make sure I understand what you say. You mean there's a lot of people spitting some bullshit. Yeah, uh, that's yeah. what you. That's, that's what the you fuck think. I'm saying. That's oh, what right. I'm saying. Right. Like, for like how that's we came, fuck I'm saying. Yeah. how we came yeah. up in it. Like even the people spitting the bullshit, they had, they had a way to do it to right. make it. You know, but they, right. they, they right. not niggas like, don't even get no effort. That's like you know how I'ma shoot, like how you gonna shoot this music video, and you don't know the words to the song. Exactly. Oh yeah. I'm stay at the phone. You don't know the, you know the words. Yeah. Oh, like rapping. you're not working, bro. Y'all think this a happy feel? Like y'all think this like like the, the, the 99 cent value meal? Like, yeah. uh, like, like this is about, an art. This is an art. Yeah, like I was talking about with Mike. You know what I'm um, me, you and Mike was talking like fuck. Niggas used to practice their shit before they go to the studio. By the time we go to the studio, we know what the fuck we doing. You got motherfuckers, they ain't even wrote a lyric yet. Ain't heard the beat like you ready to lay that bitch? Oh, I ain't no son who you were ready to check. In the booth for two hours. Put the beat on, son. Let me come up with something right quick. Something right quick? Yeah. You gonna give to the world something right quick. And you pay for the studio time. Come on, man. And if you know your son, then you got it. You know, yeah. it worked for some people, but some people it don't work for. You know, like, but shouts hey, out to the people who do put that work in, man. Yeah. And, and love their craft and put into their craft. Yeah. And respect their craft. Some people can wait on the spot, some people can't. You know what I'm saying? And everybody in the world is shit. Yeah. I think it's good freestylers to just run it. Yeah, that's a gift. That's an art. Yeah, you got to own that you know too first. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You got the, got the red, the red light red light showing on me. And I want this shit to cut off for oh, yeah. no, you. Like, we wild, almost man. at out. We almost at fifty-five minutes. That's 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 fifty-three, fifty. Though. Yeah, about fifty-three minutes, man. And it's been an honor and a pleasure fucking with y'all. Y'all do it every time. You know, it's an honor. Ain't nothing but love. And like right before you hit us up, I was talking about like, yeah, nigga, gotta get on that on that shit. Yeah, yeah, I be trying to get... Dope, I'm watching shit. Yeah, I be trying to get everybody. I'm trying to get... I, I got a couple in my mind. I ain't gonna spoil it, but I got, I got a couple. But, you know, it's a lot of people that's... They camera shot. You know, a lot of them ain't built to talk in front of the camera. And they tell me they with it. And then I be looking for a nigga and I don't... You know what I'm saying? Where y'all at? You know what I'm saying? Because see, I be got niggas on either side of me. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I got niggas on west side. I got niggas on north side. I ain't got nobody on south yeah, side. That, that's some old school shit. You know what I'm saying? Niggas were scared of cameras. Yeah. Nah, nah, nigga, jump in the camera. The old school yeah. days still did. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's a lot of people still scared of being from the thing. Uh huh. And they tell me, yeah, they with it, and I'm still waiting. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, 
Yeah, yeah. I'm still acting about it. Nah, nah, nah. I'm not gonna ask you no dumb shit. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> nigga, this ain't Vlad TV, nigga. Uh-huh. This, right. this too. You know what I'm saying? I ain't gonna ask you no dumb shit. You know what I'm saying? Yo, but this is another Holly Grove Street Stories. Yeah, yeah. Capital L A W Law in this bitch. Never called Salt Weapon. City Wide Associate in this bitch. Get your beats by City Wide, you hear me? We out this bitch, you hear me? Holly Grove to the bone, Girt Town.